Myst got its introduction to the world on September 30th, 1993 for the Macintosh. It got a Windows release in March of 1994. It has gotten multiple releases for multiple platforms, some better, some worse. No matter how you look at it, you can't deny Myst's legacy. To dig even further, we have to go back to the late 1980s and introduce to you Robin and Rand Miller. If it weren't for these two, Myst wouldn't even exist. It's unusual to note that there was another game that predates Myst, The Manhole, in 1988. In 1990, the Miller brothers released Cosmos Osmo and in 1991, Spelunks. So what does this have to do with Myst? If it weren't for these three games, perhaps Myst might not exist. Or maybe someone else may have made Myst. It doesn't matter, but what does matter is that Myst is just like Doom, history, history making. making. We probably wouldn't have CD-ROM drives if it weren't for Myst. Myst's success spawned four sequels, a three book set, two spin-offs, and a partridge in a pear tree. I could go on, but you get the idea. As time went on, Myst got itself a makeover so that the game can be run on modern machines. And the rest is history. In 2015, players got Real Myst Masterpiece Edition, which is another remake of Myst, but with a few new mechanics. First is a day-to-night transition in real time, which allows players to see the world during different times of the day. Next is the ability to freely explore or play point-and-click style. Finally, there is a new age, but not going to show you. Nope, not going to show it. Regardless, the plot remains the same in which the player is transported to Mist Island and now has to find a way to help Atris. Along the way, the player comes across a red book and a blue book. Before I go on, let me get this out of the way and say that the books are crucial to getting far in this game. Without them, the player is lost and won't know what to do. Anyways, the red book and blue book contain Cyrus and Aknar, two brothers who are at odds over their father's death and blame the other for the mess they've made and plead with the player to free them. Whole new meaning to sibling rivalry. Going back to the library, it acts as a hub when you return from a different age. Inside the library are books that pertain to a specific age as well as clues on how to get there. Like I've said, crucial to beating Mist. The gameplay remains the same. Go read a book and get clues, solve the puzzle to open an age, open book and enter said age. And this is where real Mist's weaknesses show. If you already know how to solve each age, there won't be much of a challenge, but newer players might not know what to do. Thankfully, the hint sheet is there, but it also takes away a player's chance to implement problem solving and critical thinking. When I first played Myst, I too got confused, so don't feel bad if this happens. Once you solve an age, the solution remains in place, so it cuts down on time getting pages. And this is the game's red herring. As you progress, the brothers whose page you return reveals more to the player, thus making the decision more critical won't tell you what happens as you have to play the game yourself. While Myst as a whole is an important part of game history, the game itself has aged well, but veterans of the series may not agree. Regardless of which version, let's go ahead and give this game a 9 out of 10.